Good morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is seeds of change and particularly the somewhat paradoxical case of how extreme circumstances often seed the most profound positive transformations. So before we get started, hello, Rosalyn. Welcome, welcome. So good to have you here with us this morning. And welcome to everybody else who's joining us. It's great to be here with you. So uh, before we get started talking about seeds of change, uh, let's take a couple minutes to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, and creating this brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together vigorously rub those hands together feel that friction the pressure the temperature and when you stop all that tingling and tickling all that sensation allow it to bring you present right here right now into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life welcome 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 so today we're talking about seeds of change but particularly as it relates to what may seem like cataclysmic circumstances. And um, this conversation today arises from a movie that we showed last night on Movie Night for Sustainability Now. Uh, you might want to see if you can find this movie. It's called Invisible Hand singular and it was uh, produced by Mark Ruffalo and it's about rights of nature and um, it, it particularly focused on two communities one in uh, Pennsylvania uh, and also Standing Rock um, where People have just said no to the existing law and um, have stood up and said, hey, guess what? Nature has rights and we have rights to preserve nature. Anyway, um, the extremes that I'm talking about is that one of these, one of these uh, highlighted crusades and fights um, was in Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania is one, it's where I live, and it's one of the most extractive states in the country with oil and fracking and um, coal. And, you know, we have all these wonderful natural resources that we have been mining and extracting and devastating the landscape and communities and et cetera. Anyway, it's interesting that this community in Pennsylvania is one that rose up and asserted rights of nature and also asserted themselves as a community in the face of corporate interests. They got sued by the state government. They got sued by the company that they were impeding 
who wanted to put in a, um, I, I forget what the term was, but it essentially a waste pit. They wanted to be able to inject an injection well, I guess it is. Uh, they wanted to inject waste at high pressure into the landscape. Um, and a lot of this waste was uh, radioactive and wasn't subject to testing. And, you know, the in, one of the very, very interesting points that came out of the film was that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, is not here for our protection. Uh, what it does is it regulates harm. It says, how much harm can we do? It's not stopping harm. It's saying, how much harm can we do? You know, what's a reasonable amount of harm? Which is such a crazy concept, right? Instead of saying, hey, it's to protect the environment, it's to protect us um, it, it from, from uh, pollution and such. That's not the case. What it is instead, and it is largely governed by corporate interest, what it is instead is um, saying how much harm is okay. And uh, that's an important thing for us to be aware of uh, in the face of, of the way that our, our legislation and our policymaking has gone, because um, lots of the folks that have been appointed to positions in these agencies are from the very industries that are creating the um, the affronts. So anyway, back to seeds of change and and farming and cultivating these seeds. So it's often in the face of the most dire emergencies that we are truly called into action, finally motivated to do something. And it's it's when we recognize that a threat is very dire and it often takes the threat becoming very dire in order for, uh, for us to recognize it, but it often takes things accelerating <clears throat> to a point of extreme before we take action. And um, so this is, this is an interesting sort of paradox, particularly in this climate emergency that we're facing, uh, is how much of an emergency does it need to be before we take action, before we really catalyze ourselves, before we really um, commit ourselves to making change. So in the case of this, this um, town in Pennsylvania, it was that they, that their water was going to be threatened. You know, it's like when we perceive a direct threat, that's when we will tend to get ourselves in action. And so I'm wondering, like, we can look at different crises in our own lives to see that they often are the greatest catalyst for growth and transformation. Um, I've known many people who have had experiences with severe health challenges, and those health challenges have have been the foundation of profound personal growth and transformation. You know, I could say that even with my alopecia, you know, that initially it was, it, it felt very tragic for me and was oppressive for a number of years. I. I did not 
use it to my greatest advantage. And um, after 13 years of wearing a wig, I finally recognized that there was part of the motivation for wearing that wig was that I was, I had some shame. I had places where there was a lack of self-acceptance and um, taking the wig off was a profound step in allowing and and self-acceptance like it, it was a it was a symbol I guess of a profound it was a profound shift in my beingness in in moving into my wholeness so um I, it's funny because talking about hair and hairlessness, um, I used to have the most beautiful hair. It was just incredibly silky and straight and almost black. Good morning. Good morning, Robin. Great to have you here with us this morning. It's been a while. So we're talking about seeds of change and how uh, often the most devastating or cataclysmic circumstances hold potential for the greatest change and um so I was talking about uh, my situation with the um alopecia and how um I I had really beautiful hair and it was very long and so it was if I sat on the floor people would step on it you know and and then I realized at one point that I was very identified with my hair. So I cut it short. And um, and then eventually, you know, through um, the alopecia thing, which was brought on by a severe stress event. Uh, anyway, that's when I started losing my hair. And um, I I had a lot of my identity tied up in my hair and I think I think we do especially as women um have a uh, we're we're very identified with our appearance and we're conditioned to be so you know in our culture for sure and um with with the loss of the hair and and also putting on a wig, it was like I was hiding and I I didn't I stopped swimming and because of the wig and uh, you know it, it was it was while it made me more palatable in certain ways to the public or at least that was my perception. Um, and it protected me from people saying things like I'm praying for you, even well-meaning, it just didn't feel good. Um, it, it also served to separate me internally and, and I think nurtured a sense of, of imposter syndrome somehow, you know, it's like, I I wasn't really being authentically who I am. And um, so the taking off of that wig moved me into, or I moved into and therefore could take off the wig, a greater sense of self-acceptance, a greater sense of my own wholeness and authenticity. And it was, I don't know that I would have ever arrived at that place um, had it not been for the loss of my hair. 
so you know like that's an interesting it's an interesting thing to recognize i mean it was life changing it was a very very big thing and it was a um it wasn't an overnight transformation at all um and and there may even be other dimensions of transformation yet available as a result you know but um there was a, a for me a greater movement into acceptance of life um acceptance of me acceptance of my my situation circumstance you know so i'm wondering for you my guess is that there have been some cataclysmic changes that you've experienced or profound changes or challenges that you've experienced that have helped to shape you in ways that have opened up vast new possibilities that you never would have imagined. So Robin says, love you for you. You are beautiful inside and out. Thank you, Robin. That's so very, very kind and generous of you. And Robin continues, your witness for sharing is so valuable to yourself and others. Thank you. I'm I'm so glad that um I'm I'm just really glad to be able to have this opportunity with you, truly. And and the sharing that we do with one another and and the growth and development together so um it's interesting how sometimes in order for things to get better good morning good morning elaine good and blissful now to you too it's great to have you here with us so um i'm wondering in your life what kind of upheaval has seeded the transformative positive change for you awakening awareness um elaine certainly i know you've been through an awful lot that has opened you opened your heart to to an expansion that most likely otherwise would not have been available to you um we, i think i think that change can be catalyzed by emergency and um or urgency shall we say also or the demand that we address things um, from an entirely different level. You know, when there's a level of extreme, then, then we wake up, we experience a different level of awareness, a different dimension of perception. And that's that's where we talk about quantum consciousness too you know where in many cases our growth can be linear you know where we we can see a linear progression however most often i think the greatest transformations occur in a more quantum context where we're catapulted from one level of energy to another and um along with that there's huge unbounded potential that emerges that that was imperceptible imperceivable uh prior to whatever that catalyst was and you know i'm thinking of this particularly in the context of climate change it's remarkable to me that it's not 
overtly all over the news. It is all over the news because um, we just are seeing Hurricane Ian, for instance, and um, how it's ravaging parts of of Florida and and further north and Cuba and the thing is that this is this is just the very very tip of the beginning um, of what we're in for and why we're not overtly addressing it and taking action around it collectively why it's not pervading the news right now. I do not understand. Um, other than that, perhaps people feel hopeless around being able to make a difference with it, or aren't willing to take the actions that need to be taken in order to make the changes that are required because they're going to be uncomfortable and disruptive. And we're trying to pretend that the status quo can be perpetuated, not. Um, anyway, um, Elaine says, yes. Oh, my, here. Um, pain and fear is the vehicle that forced me to be willing to look in a different direction change my mind, open my heart to remember the truth within. Exactly. And it's unfortunate that, that we are, are, have to come to a point of pain and fear to have that motivation, but it becomes a necessity when we're confronted by that pain and fear uh, that we need to shift. And thank you for that, Elaine. Rosalyn says, does the process require reducing distractions as if the container environment and environment in the right conditions will help the seed grow? Defining a meditation practice keeps changing for me. You know, I think, uh, I, when I think about meditation, part of it is reducing distraction, right? To create focus of mind or being, uh, which is really interesting because then it's expansive and, and reaches out into a broader consciousness. Um, but, I, you know, meditation practice is changing for me as well, like looking at what is that and also trying to bring that into waking moments trying to bring that practice into my my daily life rather than have just a designated time to move into this other space of being um Meditation can look a multitude of ways. You know, with Joe Dispenza, uh, one of the things we practiced was a walking meditation. So that means walking around with your eyes open, being in a meditative state. And what is that like? What is it like to be it to be in this different dimension of presence? while being in the world. And I think we get to be looking at that. Elaine says, I don't feel like it was unfortunate. I'm so very grateful for how my life has unfolded. It's actually very beautiful how it unfolds. I've come to know things are not always as they appear to be. A hundred percent, Elaine. So what we what we think is a cataclysm, what we think is a devastation or a tragedy, often is the seed of profound growth and transformation and potential that we wouldn't have previously recognized. So that's really the point of today's conversation is to recognize that seeds of change uh, often, often look 
like something that we would that is unwelcome right i mean i don't i i don't feel like it was unfortunate for me either around the whole alopecia thing you know it's um it's opened up my life in so so many ways uh and there's there's a beauty to how the intelligence of life shapes us you know often often like the fire and the hammer to um to metal right fire and hammer um but it's it, tro profound profound shifting and growing and um elaine says growing and maturing take what it takes love take i think what you're saying is growing and maturing takes love yeah it takes it takes a certain level of persistence and again i i just go back again and again to um the my working hypothesis and that is that life is happening for me and through me rather than to me and with that with that anthem even the most challenging of circumstances is contextualized we've been talking about constraints and context this week and now seeds of change um when when we have that kind of anthem to guide us or principle to guide us then it creates a a resilience an ability a strength a, a a perspective that enables us to farm the potential from circumstances. Robin says, you make a choice to allow a situation to better yourself or hinder yourself. Look for the highest good for your journey. Exactly. Exactly. So if life is happening for me, then I get to look and see what it is that life is gifting me not what life is torturing me with but what life is gifting me elaine elaine said no i said growing and maturing it takes what it takes to wake up to grow up yep that's a hundred percent the case and uh go back going back to the rolling stones line you don't always get what you want but you get what you need and um we get what it takes hopefully to wake up and we still have choice at every at every turn even though it might not look like we have choice we have choice at every turn at the very least we have choice about how we integrate things and what meaning we want to make for the situations and circumstances of our lives so uh, with that, I'm going to say happy Friday and lots of love to you guys. I uh, I so appreciate you and your engagement here and the opportunity to be with you every weekday morning here on Enlightened World Network. This is the core connection on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And Elaine says, you create your own reality when you truly are ready to take full responsibility and remember who you are. You will no longer create experiences that you perceive as suffering. And, and the key to what you're saying there that's so powerful, Elaine, is that you perceive as suffering because all suffering is a, is a function of our perception, for sure. So Robin... Um, is saying good morning to Roslyn and Roslyn saying TGIF and to all of you I'm saying thank you thank you thank you I wish you a wonderful weekend 
and encourage you to check out all the other awesome programming on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel, as well as EWN One with the Earth and Enlightened World Living. And good morning, good morning, Dido. So good to have you here with us this morning. So much love to you guys. Have an amazing weekend.